I'm like trying to, yeah, get the latest on what's going on. Who was cut at the Dallas Cowboys? Hey, babe, do you like this desk? I don't give a f about this desk. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome to the official YouTube page for Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa. This is where you can watch all of our ridiculous conversations and fun interviews. Mm -hmm. We have full shows. We've got pregames, anything and everything that you guys could want. But first, you're going to have to subscribe. Just hit subscribe right there and you're good to go. And now you can calm down with us. Yep. Can you tell that we're reading this off the script? We hope so. All right. We need to calm down and wrap this bad boy up. Press subscribe. Thanks for listening. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, and one, and two, and three, and four. It, it oh, has been so tired. one, and two, and three, and four weeks since I feel like we have done a podcast. Accurate. Because Accurate. it is that time where we're winding down our off season, so we are getting in all the things we need to get in. I've had to change the podcast time 19 different times. Which is why we're never going to get a hundred million dollar contract. If anyone's Very looking <laughs> to give us the Kelsey deal or the uh, Alex Cooper deal, we're here. We're, we're here. We're waiting. We're willing. Take it to the streets. Everybody, that's a calm down. Oh fast. my god! No, I'm kidding. Congratulations to anyone who makes uh, that kind of money doing a podcast. I mean, my God, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, but we will calm down. Too bad the Kelsey's are such bad guys, yeah. huh? It's like you can't, it's like what we said one time when we went to Strays, you know, and like how gorgeous his house is. And like, you can't say can't. anything, but like, good for you. Like Stray like works exactly. his ass off, right? When people like, and mm -hmm. the same, yeah. yeah. And the Kelsey's like, it's, it's a fucking funny show. Like good for them. They good do it them. where, you know, wherever they are. But I, I, you know what? I think we're fucking funny. I and I think good for us too. I, I said, Travis, a text. I said, remember that time that you, it was right yeah. Right before they were going to start their podcast. And do I have fireworks going off in the background? Sure do. That's weird. What yeah. was that? I think it's just like weird. What I don't know. That? Anyways, you texted Travis. Wait, what was that? Because I clapped. It's like, I think because I yelled, yeah. <laughs> I don't Wait, know. That's it's not a hundred million dollars. I know that in my life. All of a sudden I looked, which I'm already having to do this podcast because of course I don't have my computer on my phone and I'm seeing fireworks go off in the background. What's happening? Oh, it's only on the iPhone, Ryan said. My God. No, I just said, uh, I just texted him it before we got on our podcast. And I said, remember the time you said to me, hey, I need some tips. Jason and I are going to start a podcast. I think you're, you don't need any tips. You're doing just fine, my friend. Good. I need so many you. tips. I need to get my tips done. How about Joe Burrow in our um in our preseason game for Amazon, just Andrew and I went and did it because you don't bring the full crew as you know, whatever, like we did when we were in San Francisco. And Joe was on headsets with Al and, um, and Kirk, and they were talking about his hair. And he said, yeah, I'm just gonna let it grow out. And then I'll have some frosted tips. I was like, good for you, Joe. Joe looks great. Great. You do. Exactly. You. And how about him? The first year that he's had a full camp and been healthy because Came into the league, had COVID, then he had knee, then he had uh, appendix removed, then he had calf. Like, uh, I'm excited to see what he does at full strength. That whole division is wow. The fact that Cincinnati was the last in that division last year and they were still over 500. Everyone in that division was over 500 and Cincinnati was last. That's how good they are. Between the Ravens, the Bengals. This is where it's a bummer front. for us because we don't ever know, get to see those it's guys. True. It's really, really hard for I us. Know. Like I could give you, I could tell you who everybody's relatives are on the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> and the San Francisco 49ers, but it's just a shame. We never get to see those guys. So I, I've only met Joe Burrow but once in my in my those life. Those of you that are not familiar with the way that the schedule uh plays out. So CBS gets the lion's share of the AFC games and Fox gets uh the lion's share of the nfc games go lions that's another division i'm very excited to see how it shakes out oh the yeah NFC North. let's go jordan mm -hmm. love and caleb williams i'm bummed i was supposed I'm to be able to sit down with him, him but then scheduling wise it didn't work out so i'm looking forward to seeing how his interview goes with christina pink you're um okay so let's reset real quick we're already obviously sure. thinking football because it is uh less oh, than see, two this weeks. is why again we don't have a hundred million yeah. dollar deal 
Jason and Travis stay on schedule. Less than, um, oh, yeah, right. Those two do not stay on schedule. They could care less. Um, let's see, two less than two weeks away from the start of, I saw, oh my God, college football is already happening in freaking Ireland. Sure. So we're Insane. back. I, uh, you and I were in San Francisco together um, doing a preseason for Fox there, which was so great. We haven't even got a chance to talk about that on this podcast because we had Kevin for the last two weeks with our interview with him, which again, thanks Kev was for so coming great. on and doing that because Lord knows you have enough going on between the start of football and baseball. But um, yeah, so we were in San Francisco, which has never happened that you and I got to work a game at the same time. Now, I know it was a little bit different because just it was a preseason game, but it was so fun. And we were saying at dinner the night before, imagine if we got to go on the road every week together. It would be a blessing and a curse because you and I got to go to a Pilates class uh, the day of the game because we didn't have to be at the field till whatever, five o'clock. And it was just fun to be able to do that with you because I never, I won't be able to do that again for the rest of the season. No. And then I was in and out of the locker room, the green room to see you guys and be around you and Julian. Mm -hmm. And Julian is such a time. Love being around that kid. So um, yeah, we had a great time. Wait, we have a rundown we have to talk about here. This is what's coming up on the big show. Fireworks. I can't. You you read it because I don't even know how to read anyways. Okay. So we're going to talk about Jared on Pinterest, which is all frightening. I'm going to give a macaroni stole update. Uh, We are getting ready for the NFL season being back on the road. You just talked a little bit about San Francisco. I want to hear about Cincinnati Mm -hmm. because the reason why I couldn't hear about Cincinnati is I was in Italy for three short days. Travel schedule. (laughs) I've been on a wedding tour. Congratulations to the Richardsons, Brad and Jessica, and congratulations to the Purcells, Teddy and Alex and baby Theo. So, um, yeah, my husband is, um, his, both his old roommates, Brad and Teddy got married, oh, um, not to each other, Yeah, although they love each other, to their too. respected mm-hmm. wives, uh, sure do so much so that Jared's like, we're going to go to Italy for three days. Lake Como was amazing. I'm so oh, jealous. Tell me everything. This is a place I've always God. wanted to go. Okay. You start from the beginning. George, Amal, what, I mean, what's happening? Why does everyone love it so much? What is it about it? It's gorgeous. It's so peaceful. It's beautiful. Our hotel, I'll say it, we, it, the Mandarin, mm-hmm. it was unbelievable. They hooked us up with this gorgeous balcony. Oh. One, the first morning that we were there, Jarrett slept in, obviously, because he was dealing with, um, what is it? Not uh, time change, mm-hmm. the whole yep. thing. And I was like, F Check this. Back. We have the most insane insane freaking view. I grabbed the yoga mat. I did a little whatever. I played Spotify, Lake Como music, freaking ordered room service was dead the rest of the day, but it is gorgeous. The one thing, the, the the con of the wedding was this. We did not have time to get off property and eat. We literally got there, ate at the hotel the night before. It was beautiful, but I would have loved a local mm-hmm. flavor dinner. Local flavor. Um, My gal. But we had such a good time and it is it's just beautiful we took a boat ride um and we went to um where teddy and alex were staying for a drink and that was gorgeous but just seeing all the homes and the landscaping and the architecture richard branson's house is the most gorgeous house i've ever seen out on lake como it was just so lovely and fun and i missed you guys a lot and we've got to go do it because it is a it is fucking gorgeous it is gorgeous a lot of rules in Lake Como, though. A lot of rules. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. Where do you fly into? Is it that's I, I feel like is that hard to get to? Yes, it's yeah. hard. It's almost like doing a college football game, but not really. It's two <laughs> flights in a drive. We did LA to London, London to Milan, mm-hmm. and then you drive like 45 minutes to an hour to Lake Como. Um, Amazing. My only issue was this, and this is my issue when I travel. We were surrounded by the rudest people in um, our area of where we flew. It was probably a nine-hour flight to um, London. The flight attendants were so sweet. We felt so bad for them. Um, I kept Hannah on British Airways. Adorable. She was like, oh my gosh, let me... Because we just were around loud and rude people that wouldn't sit down. They had four people in a pod. What? They wouldn't like get out of the way for the flight attendants to go through. I felt so bad for the guy who was cleaning baby's vomit and trying to get past grandma and grandpa that were chilling out in the what? pod. Just it's just sit down and listen to the flight attendants. I always bitch about that, but just sit down. 
Why? Um, why? Okay, it, maybe it's us just because we are so pro flight attendants, which obviously is not uh, hard to be. But why is no. it? Why is it so difficult for people to just act like? I don't want to say normal, but just like law abiding, like just follow the rules. Like why do you have to go follow rogue, the rules rogue every time? Like, ah, oh, I don't know. I just, it's, I feel like it's you and I beat that drum of like, sit down, listen, keep your feet off the chairs in front of you. Like, uh, oh my God, R- there was something I sent you guys. I sent you guys when I landed in Milan to tell you guys. Okay, so <laughs> we're flying. So we like had that. the flight from because I just felt like so silly being like, oh, we land in Milan. Um, so we we fly LA to mm-hmm. London, London to Milan. It's a quick flight. Jarrett is in the aisle. This other woman is across the aisle, and she he is looking at some stuff on oh, his yeah, phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this woman says to him. Are you renovating your house? Crazy. Oh my God. What Stop are you it. doing? Are you insane? Why are yeah. you looking over there? And Let- he's like, yeah, ha, huh, great. Then we land and we go to dinner at Lake Como and we're having this lovely dinner outside. We're so friggin' hungry. We're just like, and we're at this little table, gorgeous table, just the two of us. And this couple is next to us. And I get it. If you're on vacation with your significant other, sometimes you like want somebody else to talk to. But at that moment, we actually liked each other and we wanted to talk to each other and things were great. I'm not looking to have convos with somebody over there. This guy, Jarrett says something about like, I wonder where the what uh, where the town of Bellagio, how far it is from here. This guy sitting next to us turns around and goes, "Well, it's actually only fifteen minutes by car." We were like, "What in the <laughs> fuck is going on? That people are in our shit right now." It was crazy. Here's what I think we need to do. Crazy. I don't have one on my phone, and there has been plenty of times that we talked about on this podcast where I have seen people texting and sending inappropriate pictures. Uh, so we need privacy Whoa. screens. No, because like you know that one time I saw like the old like we the do. older people like in the and the words were like three per screen because it was so large yeah. and they were like saying wild things to each other, which I was like, good for you. But like maybe you might want to get that. We need privacy screens on our phone and on the iPad or whatever you do it because it is way too easy when you're in two A or thirty four A to have thirty five B peering in there. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, oh, we yeah. gotta protect. Yeah, and so by the great. Way, the things that are said on text messages with anyone, appropriate, not appropriate, want to be kept between the two people. Let's just lock it up. I'm going to send, I'm, I'm buying those off Amazon right when we get off this iPad or iPad um, uh, podcast together. But yeah. Poor Jared. He was just Pinteresting, which he's okay. been but like overrunning no. your email with all his Pinteresting. We're doing some projects right now. He's really into it. Hence what the lady was looking at. And my man, and, and I'm going to let you talk yeah, really quick because yeah. I know this is your world with Pinterest. I'm so grateful he's so interested. I'm so grateful. But it's like, as I'm trying to get like Howie's vet stuff done and Mac at my gym and, you know, my Dak Prescott interview, I'm trying to get uh-huh. shit all lined up. He's like, hey, babe, let me let me know when you have a minute to look at the doors that I Pinterested. And then I'm like, okay, so I need to get my hair done for the DAC interview. Hey, babe, um, good news. I finally put all the comments down on my Pinterest page. Good news. What? Good news for CD Lamb. Good news. My man, he's crazy. I'm obsessed with Jared because Jared loves interior design. Like I love interior design. So we obviously, we trade pictures back and forth all the time. I'm like, do you like this? Do you like this? And we're on group chats about the whole thing. But then Jared and I are more interested in that than you and Steve. Like Steve's always like, I don't really care yeah. about it. You're like, just let me show up in the house. You know, it's finished, whatever. Yeah, and done. I'll, yeah, light <laughs> I'll light the candle. Yeah, I'll light the candle. Candle in the wind. So Jared and I oh, have yeah. that in common. So we were talking all together on speaker from, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And Jarrett mentions the Pinterest page thing. And I was like, I, I want to be on your Pinterest. I want to participate. So he adds me. So in my inbox, every time he adds something new to it, I oh get an email God. about it. But it makes me feel so connected to what you guys are doing because I'm like, oh, look at these. I like that. So I'll take I'll take the uh, the doors and all the other things off your hands and, you know, just focus on your interview. Uh, I'm like trying to, yeah, get the latest on what's going on. Who was cut at the Dallas Cowboys? Hey, babe, do you like this desk i don't give a fuck about this desk <laughs> what we can't afford that we're not cd lamb or 
New Heights podcast. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I could just see it. This is like, I got in trouble this morning. I'm just going to say it. I don't care. Steve doesn't care if I talk about this stuff. So I'm at the ranch because I got only one more good like week of being here before I have to go back. Yeah. And I uh, haven't been here since Pilot passed away, which I go down and Pilot's buried Aww. right by the pond. And I'm not going to cry about it because I'm being good. And I've already shed so many tears over that sweet little angel. But he's buried down there. And so yeah. I go and have my coffee with him in the morning. And I talk to him. Anyways, so I'm here for the week and my dad is here because my dad, Scott Thompson, loves the project. Now, Scott Thompson is really only interested in coming to visit me for longer than a day or two if he has a project because... I know my dad loves me. My dad loves me so much, but yeah, it's like, they love projects. Yeah, but after a while, he's like, okay, we're all caught up. It's two days now. What do we do? So I go, dad, I need you to help me build this equestrian center thing that I want to do. He's like, you got, he goes, how long do you think it's going to take? I go, Ooh, a good week. He goes, I'm in. So him and Steve, poor T Steve, Steve wants nothing to do with this, but of course Steve can't be the boyfriend that's inside. Like while the dad's working, it's like, no, he's got to be out there. And yeah. Steve keeps giving me looks like Jesus Christ, because my dad is 68 years old. And this guy acts like he is 38. He is like up at 6 AM. He's not done till 6 PM. He is just like, he's ripped. Like, he's just like, doing things that even my mom's like, oh my God, you have to make sure that your dad sits down. He's going to have a heart attack out there. And I go, well, first of all, let's not say that. She goes, well, it's a hundred degrees. And if he doesn't sit down and he doesn't take breaks anyways. So all of this is happening. And I say this to bring up the fact that, oh, what was I saying? I don't remember. <laughs> that I'm when out. Jared said, do you oh, like this yeah, desk? Yeah. And I said, we can't afford this desk. We're at C D Lamb, so which I'm trying to read an articles about, but you won't this let me. This is me at the ranch, and uh, things are exorbitant in cost. You know, you've heard me bitch to you privately oh, yeah. about this stuff, but like everything just adds up. And of course, I have no patience. I want to redo the deck. I want to redo the bathrooms. I want to redo the kitchen, whatever. So last night, my dad goes to bed finally, and because it's like I don't know, eleven o'clock, and so I'm up with Steve because I feel like I haven't even like seen him. He's been working all day, whatever. And I now I'm two glasses of wine, and so I'm um you know I'm just can't loosen up on, well, you know, this stuff costs so much money and da, 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 And you better just enjoy this because guess what? It's all going to have to go away in a year and I'm going to have to sell this goddamn ranch because I won't be able to afford it. So I'm just going on and on after poor Steve has just worked all day to help me build something. And I'm just bitching. And then I stopped myself and I was like, shut the f up. This guy is going to leave you because you cannot ask him to help with everything. Then bitch about things at night, like just wake up and say something nice in the morning. So fuck i had every intention to be so super sweet in the morning and i was gonna like make him breakfast and the whole thing i didn't even make it out of the bed before i pissed him off because i woke up i said good morning buddy i said good morning buddy because i've been talking to all these animals and you know when you talk to animals you're like oh hey buddy come here buddy so it just rolled off the tongue of good morning buddy and he looks at me and he was like what did you just call me? And I was like, I mean, babe, he goes, no, you called me that yesterday. And I looked past it once. Now you're calling me that this morning. He got up and he was pissed. I haven't talked to him all day. I, I can't get the buddy thing out of my head because I got, I can't say like, it's not good. Yeah. At the wedding we just went to in the vows, the person who married Teddy and Alex said, I encourage everyone to think to themselves, what can I do for my spouse every day to make their life better? Mm. And I was kind of thinking about that because candidly, it's been very stressful in our house. We've been traveling yep. a ton. We have a nanny living a with us. We have a 14 yep. month old mm -hmm. kid. We both have full-time jobs that take us all over the places. My patience is a has really never mm -hmm. been there, but now it is invisible. <laughs> and I catch myself being so fast to like either jump on his ass or jump on anything and be like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I've checked out. I don't care. So I've really tried to be like, I love you. Good. I appreciate you. Today he gave Mac a kiss and I was like, mom oh, wants okay. a kiss. And I mean, ugh, I'd really <laughs> want to kiss me. <laughs> so today he called me and to check in and like, I've been running around since we got home. How he's barking at a dog. He just had surgery. I'm Aww. worried about his stitches. And I'm like, I'm at my wit's yeah. end. I can't do this shit anymore. And he's like, I love you. I'll be home in 30. And I'm like, 
okay, well, that didn't help make my spouse's life better. I got to work okay, on my patience, okay, man, especially with this other. season right, coming. Here's what we're going to do. And anyone else out there listening that feels like... I don't sound fun to be married to right now. We're going to help honest. each other because I think that you and I are both in the same boat when it comes to this, that we work really hard. We have multiple... Okay, whatever. We get it. Enough. You work hard. Everyone's we working it. hard. You're okay, so well, successful. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Boring. I think, though, that we need to <sighs> prioritize our... The fireworks are going off again on the phone. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not in the relationship, but on the phone. So I think we need to prioritize the relationship. Like we always prioritize work. We are like, if uh, yeah. you know, an email comes through about work, if uh, uh, the boss calls, whatever, oh, like yeah. we rush to do that. Like, let's try, let's try. I'm saying the operative word You're here, right. try to keep each other, or hold each other responsible or accountable for what we're doing to prioritize our relationship because yeah we have incredible men are and I know look they're also really fucking lucky to be with us okay we get that part too but <laughs> yeah I think that you and I can both do a better job of not complaining about how busy and all the things that we have going on because they have all the same things going on they just don't vocalize it the way we do because you and I are just quick to like be like bleh, with everything and they keep it in I know more. and I think that we're gonna yeah. end up in a retirement home just you and I because they're gonna leave us at some point because they're over our shit so um I asked Steve I texted him today because he wasn't because he's out there working and he has it normally he'll like send a text or something and I wrote do you want to break up and he didn't even respond so we <laughs> But it's like us with our jobs. We've been fired. I I don't even have a contract. It's It's over. over. Like, yeah. So instead of um, breaking up, we're going to make them a priority. Okay, we're going to do that. I'm proud of us. Go team. I did say this though, because I, you know, I'm so happy <laughs> when we went to our friend's wedding, but we had a Stanley Cup reunion. We had a wedding you were, in Arizona. We had a wedding in Italy. No, it's awful. <laughs> we're going to Montana. Like, it's just crazy. So... I just said to my husband, I said, my God, this is just too much. Like we need mm-hmm. to take a break. And he goes, yeah, but babe, I go to all the things you asked me to go to. Okay. And I'd like you to go. I go, what? Like the fucking Super Bowl? Okay. Or the NFC championship and Steve's there. Wow. <laughs> also, like that's our immediate response is like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, your life is so hard. <laughs> like it's really hard to go to Jerry Jones's party at the Super Bowl. So sorry to inconvenience you. God, I sound like a tree. Uh, no, but that's exactly the point where, like, something gets brought up about money, and I'm like, "Oh, well, that's why I have to have five jobs." I'm just like, "Shut up!" Nails on a chalkboard. But okay, so we're gonna be better about that. Now, let's focus on things that we are already really good at, um, which is I'm not sure, but I am sure that macaroon is growing at an all time. I had to text you or leave you a, left you a voice yep. note this morning because I don't even know if Max said his first word and you told me his first word is bye. No. Bye. So cute. Everything is bye. It's so cute. And it's the wave and we wave a lot. We do this a oh, lot. Sweet. Bye is a bye is a big deal right now. And hi. Stop. He does hi um, and that's, bye. Oh, hi. Today I went to my gym with him and it is crazy to go with him when he is just running through everything. He's the guy that he's taking the toys from the kids. He's like pushing them to get up the slide. Cute. himself. it's like, sorry, sorry. He's we're not strong. a share yet. He's a strong boy. Oh, he's mm-hmm. strong. Couple things we are dealing with. And I had to Google some of them last night to figure out what to do. We are in our high chair and we look you right in the oh. face. And we drop our food over on the side. No. And it's like, Mackie, no, thank you. Don't throw your food. And he just looks at you and he goes, oh, so that's been interesting. Sass. Okay. Thumb sucking. I we're trying to kind of eliminate that. It's so cute. But it, I mean, I was reading articles where kids do this when they're five oh, we're years old. That. We're just like also, yeah, no, no, no. He just like, he's every time, like he's been getting colds lately. And so we're like, it doesn't help that he's touching stuff and then putting his fingers in his mouth. So we're just How trying to try deal to with that. that like, isn't that like a natural thing? Like just, I don't know what he kind of like, I don't know. I'm sure I'm going to get shamed no, on here, but it. we've just been trying to like pull okay. the thumb out and just be like, no, no, no. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject um, here real quick. This is your child and you can do whatever you want with your child. Like this idea that everyone gets to weigh in on everything. God knows everyone weighs in on everything anyways. Like do this, don't do that. Like I, yes, I don't have a child, but if anyone tried to come at me and tell me how to parent my, or, you know, help me parent, I'd be like, 
did I ask you? Like, I think it is wild that people think that they get to just like insert their opinion on your child. Yeah. No, Mm -mm. not today. Try and come for my job. Exactly. Not today. Um, throwing toys. He's really oh. big in his little playpen area of running and he just throws <laughs> it and he like looks at you and it's like, okay, but you can't really do that. Yeah. So a lot of things we're doing. A lot of things. This is going to be... Um, he's yeah. cute though. Well, first of all, he's so freaking cute. Um, But I just, this is going to be... How do you feel? Because last year when the off season, you know, obviously it, you had him, and, but he was a baby. So he's like not doing as much, whatever. Like, have you thought about everything happens and changes so fast with them. So when like your seat, like, yeah. you'll come home after three days and be like, he's doing this now. He's doing this now. I know. I know. Right before we left for Italy that day, he, I sent you the picture. He laid with I me in bed so and we cute. watched um, Sesame Street together. That was, it was so adorable. Fun. You guys, he but was, yeah, like, I think with Aaron and you remember too, like seeing you, you know, you've always wanted to have a baby and obviously did so much to have him. But then like, for me, I get emotional, like get a grip, Chris, but I do, I get emotional when I see you with him because it's like, that's Mm -hmm. something that you've like worked so hard to have. And now he's like a little, he's like a little man. And like, he's your buddy. He's He's crazy. Like watching, you know, what you're watching together and like cuddled with you is really cute. Yeah, it is cute. Um, Yeah, so that's been crazy. It's going to be hard to leave him during the season, but it'll, yeah. It's it's what it is because mom is going to go out there and work. Okay, so. um, Yeah, to pay for the death here, it's Pinteresting. (laughs) Do you not want to ride in that equestrian center? And by the way, Steve will never get on a horse. I sent him a video one time. It was some like guy on a horse and the girlfriend goes, my new ick is my boyfriend on a horse. Because the guy was like trying to hold on and he was like not being Kevin Costner-esque at all on it. Um, Okay. Speaking of being back on the road, back on the road means... I want to hear about uh Cincy. It means we're going to be in some hotels that... Let's just say this. You and Al Michaels oh, yeah. are my two hotel like gurus. Spirit yeah, animals. You guys, no matter if I'm going on a personal trip or if it's a work trip, oh, yeah. you guys both respectively yeah. ask like where where you're staying because you guys have high standards for the hotel uh game. So we were uh, we were staying in a hotel in Cincinnati. Let, let's just say it was not up to Al Michaels or Aaron Andrews standard standards. Uh-huh. It was I was afraid. I didn't want to sleep under the covers. Okay, we're just going to say that it was an above ground situation. Like just lay there and try not to touch anything. Don't even pick up the remote. Like whatever. And normally, like I can get past some stuff, but when you go in the bathroom and the the like, you don't. Yeah, it's just gross. No. Oh uh, yeah. So the second I got there and Al was already there, I knew I was going to get a text from Al being like, where the hell are we? <laughs> Lo and behold, here comes the text. And right after that, I hear fire trucks. And I'm like, what is going on? Then on our group text, someone's stuck in the elevator. Oh my God, I hope they're okay. Come to find out it was Justin someone Hurt. from our crew that got stuck on the elevator. But the freaking fire trucks are headed down the thing. And Al was like, we got to get out of here. So I was laughing and I was thinking about you because I'm like some of these, which by the way, like normally they're pretty good on the road, but when you get a, a not so good one, it makes you appreciate those yeah. four seasons as Al likes to call them when they're not a four seasons, it's a one season. So one there's season. a headline here that, uh, we'll talk about because there's a yes. bunch of headlines that sometimes we, you know, we weave in here that Ryan pulls for us. So this one got our attention. Avoid using this one item in a hotel room. Time bomb waiting to go off. Experts have warned wow. weary travelers. Is it weary or wary? Weary. weary. Right? Well, why are you coming to me for... <laughs> well, I don't know. It reminds yeah. me of the line in Bull Durham. Vocabulary. Where uh, these, like, women get weary or woolly or so, weary. And he's like, I don't know. It's like Crash Davis corrects him. Anyways, that was a good story. Weary travelers not to use hotel hair dryers, claiming they are breeding grounds for bacteria and fungi. Dust, mold, and debris are troublemakers for your scalp that can cause dandruff, hair loss, mm. and unwanted texture. Here's the thing, guys. In hotel rooms, you already know, whether it's the, the remote control. Do you ever go and you wipe off that remote control? Because I know I do. I am not a crazy Purell. Per- always. Always. 
Always. Because I watched that like undercover date life thing on hotels where like, don't ever use the glass in the hotel because like cleaning lady is like undercover. It was like, they just use the same rag. I know, but if I'm staying at the Baccarat okay. or the <laughs> yeah. Mandarin, I am drinking out of those glasses because it is lovely. So, I don't care what toilet bowl water has been in that <gasps> Baccarat crystal. I'm drinking it. So now we can't mm, use tasty. a hair dryer according to this. <laughs> Carissa, I remember when you and I first kind of started talking and texting each other and like As misery loves company <laughs> on the road. Yeah. And and I remember I was working for ESPN mm. and we were staying in some hotel and I literally had this crazy ass weave oh, yes, that I, I had in my head for yep. like 12 years. And it was this stupid freaking hair yep. dryer on the damn wall. And it was like, 1675 was the voltage and I took a picture and sent it to you and you're like mom dad do you still have that like that's the shit that would catch on fire or burn or up when I was doing a game and we had to stay at like a hotel that had those because I had so much yep. weave in my hair that it could not the deal with it. The worst is when it craps out halfway through drying the hair Ugh. and you're running late and now you have half a head that's wet and half the weave is dry and you're like, oh my God. And then you're calling down to the front desk. Hey, here's a PSA to hotels. Okay. Because again, an exorbitant amount of money is spent at hotels, whether it's a good hotel or bad hotel. I have two or a bad hotel. things to say to hotel CEOs or whoever's in charge of these things. Why is it that my check-in is not until three o'clock, but I got to check out at 11. I'm not even staying there 24 hours. And when it comes, it becomes three o'clock and I go to check-in, it's like, oh, we're still waiting for your room. What is, what is happening? If I had to check out at 11 and I get to check in at three, you should have four hours to clean these rooms. It's ridiculous. And some of these hotels are charging so much money. Like, you know, the ones in Santa Barbara, crazy behavior. I better get my ass in that room at 2.59 and I'm not leaving until 11.01. And sometimes I'm gonna call for that late checkout. And if you don't give me that late checkout, I'm going to be pissed and not come back here. So first of all, we got to work on it on our check-in and our checkout time. And we also have to work it on if I call down to the front desk and I forgot my razor or I need more toothpaste or whatever it is that I'm calling down for, why does it take hours for you to come up with that razor? Because the shower has been running. I need to get in there waiting for the razor. Now I got to turn the shower off because we don't want to waste water. And I'm thinking to myself, this is why I should have packed a fucking extra razor or the extra toothpaste because now I'm calling down 19 times and they're like, oh, okay, room 827. She's a real bitch. So take your time bringing anything up to her room. And spit in her Baccarat <laughs> yeah, glass. Exactly. Or I'm not going to really get into this conversation because you know what I'm going to say. You make a big deal of like, we've upgraded oh, you to yeah, an amazing know, suite. No, this isn't a suite. It's pushed off to the side and there's a little extra room. But don't, this is, a, we've upgraded you to a suite. Shit. My favorite Knock though, it off. is when you Knock check it in off. and like, we have no rooms available. And then all of a sudden you like throw out like, you're with Fox Sports. And it's like, well, we were able to free something oh. up. It's like, oh. Oh, I bet you were. But if I was just here, solo Nancy, I'm sitting in this lobby until four o'clock. <sighs> How about the hotel we just stayed at for the 49ers game and the toilet? Like it was a Toto toilet and every man on my crew, all they did was fucking talk about the toilet. How it flushes it for you. you and my, <laughs> my producer's like talking about, oh my God, now I'm like pressing all the buttons because it's too much. Well, stop pressing oh all the buttons. God. Somebody else on our crew is like, I'm so happy I sat there for 10 minutes. You know what I don't need to do in the meeting room is talk about the Toto toilet. I'm so happy you think we're all so close, but... Where's the coffee? God. If I, the class that that coffee, I can't drink no, out of. If I have that coffee, I'm going to be on the toilet because I don't know what it was that coffee that I drank. No, I wasn't. That's gross. Um, I would just say, like, it was so fun traveling oh with you, though. God. It really was. You, me, Kev, Jules. Like, it was a great sure time. We had a fun eight, dinner. We'd be like, we hate everyone. We hate each other. But, like, no. <laughs> week one, it was disagree. adorable. Disagree. We got to it go was on the so same cute. car together. We were on the flight together. We were, you know, in the Delta lounge waiting together. I know I Fox security was like, no, we don't <laughs> want this to Sweet happen. Where you guys are like, get this, this sounds or us horrible. on the sideline when all of a sudden thunderstruck came on and Julian looked at you and I like, what the fuck? Yeah, and I was like, yeah. Jules, just get into it. Okay. My gal, you, I've got to tell you in Tulum a couple years ago with our old friends, you sleepy group, when we, a thunderstruck came on and you knew the whole routine. And I was like, this is dramatic, Aaron, relax. Now after watching DCC, everyone, I, I get it. 
Yeah, a Hell lot of yeah. people late to the DC, including myself, the Thunderstruck. Wow, I have a whole, me. whole new respect for all things that go with the leg kick and the, oh my God. The landing, the all of it. Hip surgery after this. Oh, hell yeah. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Something else about traveling. Oh, our producer, adorable, Richie Zion, him. the I'm next morning him. at the meeting room, he's talking about the Toto, but he was also saying, I just really enjoyed seeing you and Carissa in action. Oh, God, sit back and watch. Wind us up. What Jesus. part? I'll have another I drink. Um, I love Z so much. Adorable. You've got a great crew. They're just so great. We I do. And that was one thing when we yeah. I went with, with... Which gross. Grossy. Oh, never not smiling, this guy. You guys imagine like no. the cutest teddy bear in the whole world and just always smiling. And this is what I want to... You know what? I want to be more like, like Grossy. I've never seen him in a bad mood. And if he is in a bad mood, it's like... Like... I uh, like the slight I'm laughing because I know one night he was oh, in he such was. a bad mood because something it. happened with the commercial break and he was oh, pissed. Well, it's very few and far between. I just I, I want to work on being m- like more like him. So I'm going to what would Grossy do? Grossy and Jesus, you know, really be more like Jesus and Rich Gross. But no, I want to find Grossy a girl so bad. OK, well, let's do it. We yeah. have, we still have to follow uh-huh. through with um I know <laughs> our, uh, matchmaker 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 make me a match yeah but yeah I was just thinking about it because Whit and I because w- uh, all the guys weren't with us because it was just him and I for the pregame but I was just thinking about how sure. lucky when I was him and I we had hours to kill before game and it's a preseason game so obviously like not you know no one's playing because they want to make sure everyone stays healthy and so our normal prep or things like that was uh, abbreviated because you just didn't have to do as much because the pregame sure. was only like two minutes. Anyways, so we walked all around Cincinnati and Witt, of course, played for the Bengals oh, for a cute. long time. And, you know, we had lunch together and I just, I remember sitting there being like, I am so freaking lucky and so are you that we work with guys that we also want to hang out with and consider friends can yeah, pal around like, with you know you get to travel and go to all these like great places but like when you get to do it with people that you love it's just i don't know i'm really excited for yes you know off seasons is whatever you want to call what we've had where you get a little break here and there but i'm really excited to get back to work and like hang with our people because they're just awesome and i love them and i feel great grateful how many times can i say grateful i can't say grateful but i am grateful I think it sounds great. Cool. Um, hey, spe- so I talked about being on a plane and I talked about people not obeying what the flight yes. attendants are saying or doing all the things. But here's something they're giving advice on. Don't flight attendant says doing this one thing on a plane could make you seriously sick. So interesting. Do not get ice in your drink. Warned a flight attendant on Steve's favorite thread, Reddit. (laughs) This, the ice is put in a tray with a scoop and the trays don't get cleaned very often. Ew. Every service on the plane is touched by hundreds of people daily and not often disinfected. We don't have the opportunity to wash our hands at all during the beverage service. Ew. I had read that before and that is a big thing for me. Do you I not, also you don't feel like ice? a snob when you they're know, like, you've, you've, really? no, because I had read like that. Charge. Also, I kind of heard that like getting coffee isn't a great thing because they use, I, and, and I, blah, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but I thought I read one time getting coffee on a flight is not great because they're not using the bottled water and you don't know where the water, mm. I don't know. I'm not as picky with that. I don't know. Because uh, sometimes at home... Well, but you don't know what's the where the water's coming from. I think it helps build up immunities, you know? Like, throw a little bit of germs okay, in there okay. every now and then. Because sometimes sure. when you're too sterile... Because I'm sniffing. I know, me too. As I'm wiping my nose because my nose is running. I don't know. It's like, I, when we were kids, it was like stuff would drop on the floor. And my mom just like, you know, eat it off the floor. Like, whatever. The five-second yeah. rule. Yes. I mean, hygiene, like cleanliness and all that kind of stuff is paramount. Okay, we get that. But I think... I don't know. I never thought about the ice thing. That... Mm-hmm. I mean, the more and more you think about anything, it's disgusting. You know, it's just Ugh. all of it's gross. And then when I think about it too much, that will make me like a hypochondriac and just want to stay inside and then not be able to go anywhere or do anything. I, the thing that I'm always very aware of is door handles going in and out of whatever oh, a yeah. store or restaurant. Like I use the elbow technique, oh the back of the arm. Like that's something that I'm very diligent. I was about, watching. But- this lady on my flight, she was just chewing the shit out of her fingers. Yeah, of and I was I thinking to myself, though. oh my God, this is so gross. It's on a plane. Like she kept chewing and chewing and chewing. And then she would wipe her nose and chew. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like you're going to be so sick. I have, a, I have a bad habit with, because like, 
acrylics. <laughs> okay, girl. Where like, I'll be like thinking and I'll tap or touch my face. I can need to stop doing that. You know, I'm getting rid of all the fake things though. So I don't have, I'm really going, well, let's just take this to the streets. I'm vacillating. I'm going back and forth between do I put extensions back in for the season or do I leave my hair short? I've gotten, okay, I, you're, you're shaking your head. You want me to leave it short. Okay. I You're love it. You're short. You want short. Steve says short. My mother says short. But then sometimes, like, we win. I don't know. I just feel like sometimes on air, you know where it's like the full, like when you put the extensions in, it just feels full and like, but like, thank God. Like, say, yeah, but why does it have to be so long? No, I know. We're done with that, like, you know, stripper long. Not that anything's wrong with a stripper. You know? I had stripper along in the other day, though, for our pictures. Whatever. It's fine. Um, I'm just fully into, like, the other day when we were in San Francisco, I tried to put clip-ins and be cute, and then it yeah. was blo- so windy. Out. I just took them out in the middle of the field. I was like, hey, Fred Warner, and then took my hair. You I don't know. know. It's like, what are you I know. I, I'm just over the idea of, like, the, like, it was so windy and the wind blowing and, like, seeing, because then I always feel bad when I, and I'll yeah. tell girls. If I see their um, shit hanging out there, hey. I'm like, hey, girl, uh-uh. Cause I want someone to tell me and Lord knows like my show. mom will always do this when I, I'm like home or something. And I'm like walking in front of her with my dad. She like thinks it's like a cute moment of like my dad and I eight times out of 10, every time she's taking a picture of us, like walking the weaves all jacked up. And I'm thinking to myself, my God, like this, is this is how I'm out here. No one is correcting the wrongs here in the streets. Yeah, I know. I, I know. It. It's more I of know. a security thing where you're just like, I want fullness on hair because you know, sometimes you see people on TV with like three strands and I'm like, Hey, let's put some extensions in i just you know my hair journey has been a long one and thank you for for going on it with me because it's just poor dominique is always like what are we doing now you know it's something i'm very decisive in my life about a lot of things hair is not one of them so anyways well speaking of journeys this is the last headline i want to hit before we have to wrap oh, you're it adorable. up airport tray aesthetic is annoying everyone. And even the TSA is aware of the staged glamour photos. I ha- if, if I see you at TSA yeah. doing this, I'm taking your tray and I'm turning it over. And I know that's not nice and I need to calm down, but, but we got to go. What's we got to go. Staged? Enough. I've never even heard. Are you insane? Well, you're on TikTok. You, you love TikTok. Or well, TikTok trend where you empty your carry-on bag, artfully placing everything into TSA bins and snapping social media worthy shots. First of That's all, disgust- speaking of here- germs, there's so many germs in those trays. What are well, you here's, doing? Well, here's the question Gross. that I have. Very much like getting off a plane. It's like a NASCAR pit stop where it's like, I don't want to be the person holding anyone up. What airport are you at where you can curate your TSA tray? Because I I know that now that I'm even TSA pre-check, which I got to talk about TSA pre-check. I waited a long time to get pre-check. And every time I'm dinging, I'm going through there. The bracelets are going off. I have to back up. I'm just going back to my oh, regular line. I got in a fight with a lady I'm about that. I'm going back to my line because my common line over here with the with the the general population, I wasn't going off because I would just go through the ones where I'd have to do this. Now, TSA pre-check is yeah. sending me through the metal detector. and We got a button on the jean or we got the bracelet. We got the necklace. And oh, now yeah. I'm back at square Hell one yeah. and I'm taking more time than I did with the general pop so anyways who has time to curate this when there's a line behind you i'd be like hey uh-uh keep it moving no i would you, lose the Tulsa airport? my mind well i don't even know this picture the picture we're looking at will obviously support the the thing that's supposed to be cute but i don't even know like that just we have the alchemist in there like oh that's my that's what i read i'm just so i'm so in tune with the world the alchemist what hope this helps stop it Stop who does it. this help? It doesn't help. It. it doesn't help. That's what the graphic says. I hope it helps. It doesn't help you. the person behind you or the person behind them trying to get on that flight. Uh-uh. Send that thing through. I'll tell you who's not doing that. Aaron Andrews, mm-hmm. Rich Gross, Casey Garland, Kevin Burkhart. Well, we're trying to oh. make our flight after the game and get a drink before. We ain't taking pictures of that. We're taking pictures at the TGI Fridays when we get our Santa Margarita by the Luda. Here's the other thing that I have. Why did, why, in the social media world that we live in sometimes where everything has to be curated so perfectly, who needs this? Who who asked for this? Because this is just my tangent on a bunch of stuff where it's like- Not me. I, I don't know. I don't even get it. I'm old. Anyways, um, well, I'm old. And on that <laughs> note, it's time to go to bed because we've been rambling on. No, we have not been on a podcast together in a couple of weeks. We have a lot of things that we need to say. So if you've learned nothing from this podcast, learn this, that Aaron and I want you to be nice on an airplane, get through a TSA line quickly. Uh, and if you are not being as nice to your significant other as you should be, take time to tell them how wonderful they are. Don't call them buddy. 
and look both ways bye. before you cross the street. Bye. Bye. Not close. Bye. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.